Today's video is all about what you need to know for home inspection and the top five most expensive things that are gonna be found at a home inspection. Home inspections are super important. I have Jim Brown of Brown & Co. Property Inspections with me today. Stay tuned. This is one of those videos that without watching it could cost you a lot of money. Hi, I'm Kelly Norton, your AZ Realty Lady at EXP Realty. Count on me for all things Arizona real estate. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Kelly Norton. I'm a Valley native and a real estate agent of over 23 years right here in the Phoenix area. I'm also the owner of the Arizona Living Group and an associate broker here at EXP Realty. So if you're looking to relocate to the area, maybe you already live in Phoenix and you wanna to move to a different part of town, feel free to reach out, hit contact us on the website or call or text. Any of those methods work perfectly fine. So thank you so much for being with us today, Jim. Yeah, absolutely, happy to be here. So guys, we wanna share with you kind of those, what, your top five, right? Top five, yeah, kind of most, uh, maybe expensive things, certainly. You could, you could say that, kind of the things that, uh, really why we're out there, things we're, we're trying to get ahead of and, and information we're trying to provide for our clients. Absolutely, so let's go ahead and dive in. So you, in Arizona, you have an inspection period that happens after you enter into contract. Mm -hmm. So that can typically be 10 days. That's what's pre-written in the contract. So during that 10 day inspection period is when we always recommend that you have an independent home inspector come and take a look at the home. Mm -hmm. We also recommend on new construction, we'll have another video on the things that are found that are most costly on new inspections uh, for new home inspections. Today is about resale. Somebody mm -hmm. has already owned the home and you're purchasing that home. So what would you say is, is number one in, and you can go in least expensive as number one or most okay. expensive, or you don't have to go in a, in a costly order. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. I think we'll start with the most expensive. Okay. And, and I, I like this one because maybe cost is just too much. So what we're talking about here is, is major, major structural movement. Uh, I, I can remember one, one home and only one home, and I've been inspecting houses for almost 10 years now, and this was maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, Southeast Valley, uh, this house had beyond obvious structural movement, um, and to the point where I'm not sure they actually were able to find anyone that was really willing to take on the repair. Oh, we're, wow. we're talking, you know, cracks through the tile floor, upwards of an inch plus wide, where you could see down, down almost like to the dirt. Like grow the grass in the kitchen yeah, kind of a yeah. thing? And yeah, and then you, you know, look up and there's just cracks from floor to ceiling. Again, we're talking one, two inches where the framing is now visible. So, you know, if repair was even wow. feasible, we're talking about lifting the home back up in areas, stitching concrete back together, framing repairs. You know, it, it can get to the point where it's just not feasible, you know, and you can't exactly total a house like a car, so right. it's like, where do you go? So that's why I put that as number one, because yeah. maybe in that case, I, I do like to tell people all the time, you know, anything's fixable. That was the one time where I'm not sure if it was fixable. Yeah, so. it sounds like definitely some significant yeah. settling there. Oh, so yeah. some of the minor settling that we see, um, can you explain to people what mm -hmm. is normal in Arizona? Yeah. yeah, so homes are wood frame, right? And framing changes size and, and framing settles. So you're gonna see, you walk through a house that's been around for maybe even less than a year, you know, above, you know, windows and doors, little cracks that kind of just, They'll start and then they just kind of trail off, right? Those are usually not that concerning. You'll see in a ceiling where the, the drywall tape joint is visible, right? And it may be kind of just a line or it might be a minor crack. Again, that's a tape joint, right? That's the weak spot. So you'll see some, some indication of movement there. Usually nothing to worry about though. The cracks that we're concerned with typically start at the corners of doors and windows and then they'll, they'll shoot up, right? Mm -hmm. All the way to the ceiling and then you'll see a crack all the way along the ceiling and then sometimes it goes all the way down the corner of the two walls. That's where the house is kind of moving too much. It might be twisting, right. racking, things that you really shouldn't have happening. Okay, right. perfect. Mm -hmm. Just so you guys know, we do have post-tension slabs now, which is an engineered slab that's designed to have the home kind of float as one and move as one, mm -hmm. but some settling cracks are normal with that. So yeah. some people will go, oh, there's a, there's a crack and I have a post-tension now my, and my house has structural problems. Not right. the case. No, no, not the case. Concrete is, to a degree, it's expected to crack, right? Right. 
Um, and, and this actually kind of leads into the next one. Perfect. Right. So, so the next one is foundation repair, right? And, and that does, so if you have foundation, a slab that needs some repair, it doesn't necessarily mean the structure above has been jeopardized, right. but getting that foundation repaired is going to maybe prevent that, that structure from needing that repair. So exactly. I, I list this as number two because it can actually be quite costly though. Not so much with the post-tension. Uh, post-tension systems are designed to hold everything together as it cracks, right? You're preventing um, the concrete from moving apart, from settling, differential settlement, things like that. There's a lot of houses in the Phoenix area though that are not post-tension, right? Every, everything pretty much built before, we'll say the late 90s, mm -hmm. okay? So homes built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, those concrete slabs relied on rebar. Yep. Now, when foundations get wet, concrete gets wet, it's like a big hard sponge, right? And all that rebar in there gets wet. What does steel do when it gets wet? It rusts, rusts. and it expands and it changes shape and it loses its you know, structural capacity to do anything. And so when you, know, you walk around some of these houses and we call it spalling, right? That's a right. word that you'll hear a lot of. That basically, the long and short of that is the, the surface of the perimeter of the foundation is just kind of crumbling and falling apart. In some cases, it starts to expose some of that rebar. That rebar got wet, and so you'll see these kind of long horizontal cracks. I've, I've seen repair estimates upwards of $200 per linear foot. Mm. Now, you imagine that, you know, along the whole side or two sides or four sides of a house, right. you know, where you can actually get into the tens of thousands of dollars to repair the concrete. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah, why that, that yep, yep. That's, that's number two. And, and we've seen plenty of that. You yeah, know? we have, we've had yep. several. <laughs> and so my, my reminder here, just to invest in gutters, gutters will uh, prevent this, if not slow it. Yes. All and right? I, I have this conversation often, especially with folks that are from out of state and even though we don't get a lot of rain here, we do get a lot of rain when we get the rain. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the new construction folks will say, oh, you don't need to get, don't need to get gutters. Well, they're not including them. So they don't want you to think that right. you should have had them on there. I recommend that you do. Um, I've got them on my house. I had them on my last house and I put them on the last house, but it was almost a hair too late because we did start to get some of that falling. Mm -hmm. yeah. and also the prior owner had some of the vegetation a little too close to the house and that's bringing moisture towards the house too, mm -hmm. which can also lead into termite issues as yep. well. So yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Like you said it perfectly. We don't get a ton of rain, but we do get rain. It comes yeah. down in buckets and, and it should be controlled, not just ignored. Exactly. Right? All right. So what do you have for number three? Okay. So here in the Phoenix area, we have a lot of tile roofs, right? Tile yes. roofs. So uh, roofs, like pretty much everything else, uh, have a serviceable life. It's longer than most other components, but it is there. So here, Phoenix area tile roofs, what's below the tile is actually what has that service life. The tile lasts essentially indefinitely until someone kind of right. stomps on them and they need to be replaced. And these are concrete tiles. I've had some people yep. asking me recently, you know, you guys mm -hmm. have clay tiles. Well, those were way back. Yeah, <laughs> clay tile, not as common. Yeah. Uh, concrete tile, very common. Okay, so the uh, tile underlayment typically lasts 20 to 30 years, or we'll just go right down the middle and say 25 years. There are, I don't know the number, but how many houses here built between 98 and 06? Yeah, right? a lot. A lot, <laughs> a lot, lot, lot. And there are then a lot of houses coming up on that replacement interval. Yes. Um, so big part of the inspection on a home that's in that age range is we're lifting up a few tile. We're not dismantling things, right. but we can peek under there and get an idea of if it's been replaced or not right. very easily. And if it hasn't, what kind of shape is it in? And we'll offer our opinion, right? Uh, roofing contractor might have a different opinion, right? Roofing contractors make a good amount of money selling roofs. That's what they do. Right. Um, some might say after 20 years, let's look, get ahead of it, replace it. Some might say, wait, wait another five, right? Maybe yeah. wait till closer to 30. It really just depends. Uh, but that, that can, you know, easily get up into the twenty twenty five thousand dollars yes. $25,000 range if it's a, you know, a fairly large home. And that's, that's really a good point because this is one of the things that I always discuss with my clients. Are you planning to put solar on the home? Mm -hmm. And some homes have just had solar put on. 
a 22 year old roof. Oof. So yeah. it, these things it, <laughs> in my mind don't make sense sometimes right. because they just put on solar onto an old roof that mm. indefinitely is going mm -hmm. to have to be replaced. Yeah. And this is going to be your cost as the buyer to have the solar removed and then pay to yeah. put it back on. Yeah. So these are all things that we help you with and we help you uh, digest and, and understand for your future budget. So. Uh, one of the things that you're definitely going to get with, with working with me or working with any of my agents on my team is we are going to really dive into what your goals are with your house and make sure that we're planning for these types of things because we don't want you to all of a sudden in two years go, oh my gosh, wow, I had mm -hmm. no idea about this expense. That's, mm -hmm. That is one of the things that you should count on a real estate agent to help you have that foresight to plan ahead with your budget on things that you may want to do for your home and mm -hmm. adding solar to those roofs that are old, that's going to be a more costly expense yep. for you for sure. Yep. Great point. Absolutely. Lots of solar out here and to, to, and the roofers don't do that, right? There's a different company that has right. to now be brought in and you can't always reuse all those materials. Some of the wiring and stuff yeah. specifically, you might be purchasing new rather than reusing. So certainly another variable. Yeah. And yep. if you're someone that's watching the video that owns a home out here that has solar and you know that you are going to be replacing your roof and you need some contacts for removing the solar. So that's another thing that uh, I provide for our customers as well is contacts for pretty much anything that you would need uh, for your home, but kind of in life in general too. Mm -hmm. So um, if you needed to have a hairstylist, if you need to have uh, some kind of a mold inspection, if you need to have window treatments, appliances, anything for your home, that's one of the things that we do provide for our customers as well. Yep. A lot of these companies will offer uh, the discounts to our customers and price guarantees to not be beat in the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, number four? Yeah, let's All right. roll, number four. All right, so number four, we'll talk a little bit about plumbing, right? Um, so again, you know, every age home may or may not have some problematic plumbing. Maybe, well, we're talking about homes that are about 20 years old or older, okay? Right. So um, the, the oldest material we might run into is gonna be uh, some metallic plumbing materials. You don't see a lot of metallic plumbing anymore unless it's copper. And even that, you're not seeing that a lot in, in more of the, you know, the builder grade yeah, homes. PEX, right? PEX is a lot yeah. less expensive to, to, to purchase and install. So that's why they've, they've moved on to that. Copper, we, we still love, but we don't see a lot of it in newer homes. So what we're talking about is uh, cast iron drain material. So the material below the home and below the yard or uh, galvanized um, distribution, right? Yeah. Me metal rusts and, and metal plumbing materials are no different. They have water running through them for you know, 50, 60, 70 years, you know, things happen. Um, and so when we're in a home that was built in the, you know, the 50s or 60s, maybe early 70s, maybe not so much, 50s, 60s, we're really kind of on the lookout for any of this, yeah. you know, in the attic, uh, the metal distribution lines, metallic distribution lines, we'll do sewer scopes, right, to identify if it's the original cast iron Highly drain and, and if so, what condition it's in. And, you know, to replace these materials, as you can imagine, if you're, if you need to replace a cast iron drain, below the home there's flooring there's a concrete foundation in the way and a lot mm -hmm. of dirt and you know so luckily there are you know relining and things like that and there are some things you can do but none of this is inexpensive right, right. so sewer right. scoping in older homes is an absolute must and then there is a everyone's heard of maybe polybutylene i know you've heard of polybutylene a lot of people haven't yeah, so, so that's one of the things yeah. when folks are looking for homes that are kind of in that yeah. 89 88 to 92 year build exactly that discuss with them yeah, yeah it's a tricky thing to spot sometimes once in a while so we're talking about uh, a, a plastic distribution material that was it was actually introduced you know to the world closer to the late 70s it, it right. caught on here mid 80s and then it was eventually you know it wasn't being installed anymore towards the mid 90s late 90s about 96 is when you shouldn't see it anymore yeah every now and then you'll go up into an attic and you'll just see it everywhere and it's real easy to find um, but not all the time sometimes it's under insulation uh, we have little camera will stick in the wall if we're looking at a home in that age range we'll uh with, like i said a little boroscope camera we can tell that way it's easy to spot when you see it it's a grayish blue material um, there were class action lawsuits, you Correct. know, hundreds of millions of dollars in flood and it damage. Was the fittings that would burst on those, right? The fittings, yeah, little brass fittings, they would pop. Uh, but the material itself, too, the plastic material, it didn't hold up to some of the more 
um, corrosive water conditions, right. you know, he heavy levels of additives, things like that could, could burst it. Um, and if you're buying a home that was built in that age range and it has this material, and if you have, you know, three and a half bathrooms and a kitchen and a laundry room, all these plumbing lines, and they're all behind drywall. So again, now we're talking 15, 20,000 plus dollars right. to change out your hot and cold water lines. I mean, I can think of a lot more fun things to spend that money on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And with the class action lawsuit, uh, a lot of folks were able to get those pipes replaced. So just because a home is in that that time frame mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it has it. A lot yeah. of them were replaced in the class action lawsuit, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of folks, you know, for whatever reason, they, they may have been living under a rock or they just didn't care because well, yeah. it wasn't happening to their we, house. We but, still find it, yeah. you know, less and less, certainly, you know, to your point, we'll, we'll go in an attic and we'll see it obviously cut mm -hmm. and then PEX or copper right next to it, you know, right. and at that point we know, yes. you know, we, we know that it's been at least partially replaced, you know, but we still you know, let the buyer know to have that conversation with the seller to say it was all replaced, right? right. <laughs> Not just a couple exactly. parts. Yeah. So yeah. that is important detail. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's roll to the last one. Number okay. five. Last one. So what's more important here in the desert than keeping our houses cool? We, we literally couldn't live here if we didn't have modern air conditioning. Right. Right. And, right. and we use it a lot. Yes. About half the year. I mean, half the I year. Would say. Yeah. yeah. And then three months out of the year, these systems are almost not turning off. Right. Right. So they, again, serviceable life, um, about 10 to 15 years. And maybe we'll go with 12 right in the middle. Yeah. Right. So again, a lot of the houses built during the boom, they don't have the original equipment anymore. Right. Right. But uh, based on that, you know, age range, right, 10 years or so on average, we might be getting close to that second replacement in a lot of cases. Yes. We see a lot of equipment that was built between you know, like 2010 and like 2018, give or take, right? Yep. So uh, it's super important to know the age of the equipment. We report on the age of the equipment on every inspection we do. And if it's at that 10 to 15 year mark and it's still performing fine, right. we have a you know conversation about understanding how much longer it may or may not last. And then if it is underperforming, there's a few things we test um, you know, and it's, it's at that age or, or maybe even a little early and it's starting to maybe just fail at the expected age or prematurely. Right. Certainly you're looking at a replacement, um, potentially anyway, and that's 10,000 plus. And um, a lot of these systems too, um, it's how they were cared for. So mm -hmm. they should get regular servicing. Um, and I've heard mixed opinions about that once a year or twice a year. Once a year. Okay. Yeah. Once a year I'd, should be good. I'd heard... I, used to hear two all the time, twice a year, yeah. twice a year, but that yeah. was from the air conditioning guys, right? Yeah. I mean, the, and yeah, the, I mean, I guess twice a year, it yeah. doesn't hurt, yeah. but, but I, I would say at least it's once a year. Once yeah. A, year. a big yeah. part. I maybe you it depends use it on more one time, you know, one portion of the year. Yeah. So. I, yeah. I'd like to recommend people, if people ask me, you know, when should I have it tuned up? I tell them, you know, March ish, yeah. right before, before the hot season. Before the hot season, because yeah. you will not get an air conditioning guy out there yeah. to service your unit once it gets hot because they're all replacing ACs. Yeah. So think about, you know, big business, right? They're going to come out to your house for a couple hundred bucks versus coming out to your house for the 10,000 AC job. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very booked. So keep that in mind too. Yeah. Also, changing your air filters here in Arizona, it's a little, it can be a little dustier, especially monsoons and everything else. Use the cheap air conditioning filters, mm -hmm. not the thick ones. The thick ones will make your system work harder and change it about every month. Yeah, once a month. I like once a month. Like you said, the cheapest yeah. ones, especially if you have pets. If you don't have pets, um, you know, and you, and you keep your home very clean, you might get away with 60 days. Um, but I've heard 90 days thrown out there a lot. I, I do feel like it's better to be proactive. Absolutely. Yeah, 30 to 60 days, just depending on the, you know, indoor environment. Yes. Now, uh, as far as like roof and air conditioning and, and even pools, we, if there's things that Jim identifies in the home inspection that he feels that we need to have a uh, further look at from a, a licensed professional in that field, then that's something that we do as well during that inspection period. We'll get bids, we'll have them take a look and let us know for sure what's going on with it so that we're mm -hmm. best prepared when we're doing a repair request to that seller. That's right. So perfect. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much. You're very I welcome. Appreciate of course, it. of course. Happy Always to be a here. Pleasure. 
Well guys, if you have any questions for Jim or I, feel free to put some comments here on the video. You can also do contact us on my website. And Jim, what is your contact info in case somebody wanted to reach out to you? At Instagram, you can find us at, at Brown & Co Homes and our website is www.brownandcoinspections.com. Perfect. All right, guys, well remember, subscribe to the channel and click that little bell. That way you're notified when we put up new videos. Again, I'm Kelly Norton, Associate Broker here at eXp Realty, and I uh, can't wait to meet you soon. Take care. Bye.